Good morning. It's Lindsay here. Welcome to my quarter past arts and crafts journal. I am recording on a new camera, thanks to my parents. They gifted me this for my 30th birthday. It's nice to be able to just kind of turn this one on and be able to see what I'm doing because I've actually got one of those screens that I can make sure everything's in frame and everything. Sometimes just that little bit of unsuredness that can come from not being able to verify whether or not things are in focus. Uh, I think it just causes me to rush through things rather than take my time and just enjoy it. So I am going to try very hard though not to be staring up at the screen up there as much. I like looking directly at you. <laughs> anyway, I have been taking a bunch of little shots here and there when I can think to take out my camera. I like documenting things. I like getting things down on record. There's something about it that just makes me feel like I'm learning to cherish my life a little more just by trying to preserve these little moments of beauty and comfort that I see around me but I've also been challenging myself to be much more real on camera in the sense that I try and sit down in the way that I sit down in journal where I just let all the things flow good or bad and not try and make those sort of judgments on them but just to say what I think and see how it sounds and use it as a time to reflect and those sort of videos are not really the ones I felt too inclined to post on YouTube. It's more just been for my own personal journaling pleasure, I guess. I find that when you say things to yourself or you write them down like that, you can get this, this feeling anyway that you're getting more of an objective stance on your own thoughts just by hearing yourself back saying the things you're thinking about or the things you believe and if you're looking for clarity I think that either saying them on video like this to yourself and or writing them down in a notebook and reading them back I think that a lot of the things that we do or we're about to do if we were to take that sort of second look at them and be willing to put it on the record, so to speak, put something down like that, that maybe we would rethink some of the things that we do or that we're thinking. I'm a human, I struggle with things and different problems and confusions. And so I'm trying to find a way to best sort myself out. And I find that self-reflection, which there's lots of way to do, ways to do, you know, you don't need to just record yourself or write things down, but I would definitely encourage you to do so. There's something about seeing yourself on camera as you're saying things. I think that is very um, scary for a lot of us because who we think we are and who we are often actually look very, very different. And that can be a little bit tough to get used to, but it's far better to know yourself as you actually appear and you're actually acting than to just fool yourself. So anyway, I try and think about these things as being only 15 minutes at a time because then I can stop myself from going down too many rabbit holes as I tend to do, but eh, nothing wrong with rabbit holes. That's what the internet shows us, There's lots of them. <laughs> anyway, I have so much crafting to talk about. Guys, I just finished up a stay at West Coast Colors Farm, Lynn and Chris. And Lynn and I, we have a really good old time together. I am very inspired by other artists and getting to spend time personally with them in their natural habitat is very inspiring. And I just find myself totally on fire with ideas when I get home. So I am on repeat right now. <laughs> with a certain certain sweater. I have been knitting the growing cardigan in many different gauges, in many different types of yarns because I like the construction, I like the fit, and I find that this is just one of those patterns. It feels like it's a blank slate for me to play around with and tweak and do things here and there. 
and I like a lot seeing how it sits in different fabrics and I can just see that this is going to be a very versatile sweater shape for me. It's something I feel very comfortable in and something I just find very easy to wear. I don't fuss with it at all. I hate fussing with my clothes or fussing with hair or whatever. I just want it to, I want to be happy with the way it just sits. So yeah, this buttonless open front style cardigan with drop shoulders. I just love it. So this is going to be the largest growing that I have made so far. And this is out of some Plotu Lopi and some Drops Alpaca Silk. And so, yeah, I really love how this fabric feels and I love how it drapes. It's so incredibly lightweight for being such a large amount of fabric. So I'm using a white or cream and a gray together and I love the color then it gives this very pale sort of mottled gray and I'm on the bottom portion of this now another thing that I realized that I enjoy about this sweater is the I-cord edgings that it has it has you do them along the front here so it creates I think just a really nice looking edge I did change the pattern a little bit here and add some garter stitch along this because I just want to see if that makes it lay a little bit more flat. And then you've got I-cord edging along the bottom of the sweater too. So I think that adds a lend, that lends some durability, adds some structure to those edges and I've been looking at some much more older sweaters and realizing that those edges often are one of the first places to go. So it's like your cuffs, all those edges, they get a lot more friction, I guess, and I guess have more of a chance of being snagged on things and stuff like that. It's one of the things I dread about knit fabric. <laughs> it's just, it snags occasionally. Luckily it can kind of work things back, but yeah, I'm knitting this at quite a loose gauge. It's, I think about 13 stitches. Um, to every four inches rather than what the pattern calls for, which is 19, I think, after what after blocking. So this is the smallest size, but it's coming out larger than the 2XL size that I knit in a sport weight on smaller needles. So yeah, this is gonna be a very big and cozy cardigan. The arm holes are quite large and deep, but I was really hoping for something that could be a, a good cozy up and cuddle up surf cardigan for the colder days. And Plotulopi is just, I have to say, I think it's one of my favorite fabrics that I've ever worked with. It's just so, the lightweightness of it and the warmth that happens because of all the air that gets stuck inside of these unspun fibers is just amazing. <laughs> I didn't know really that yarns were like this until I tried some of this Icelandic unspun stuff and I look forward to actually trying more different types of unspun wools. I know that a uh, mill in Alberta, Custom Woolen Mills, also does some unspun uh, roving sort of style stuff like the plates. So I'd like to get some of that at some point too and give that a try. So I have been doing a ton of <laughs> spinning and stuff too but I'm realizing I have all of my growings right here in front of me, just about all of them. I've got a linen and silk one, I think in the other room, or a cotton silk one, sorry, in the other room. So I'm knitting this one here. So they're all kind of at this weird stage, but this one here is knit with some Juniper Moon Patagonia and it is in this beautiful dark gray color and I'm doing a broken rib for this one so I did the back paneling which is normally just in a plain ribbing I did it in broken rib just because I wanted to switch it up <laughs> I knit the first growing completely to pattern I knit my second one with some modifications where I did some different 
pattern shaping like I did a, a triangle shape on the back of the shoulders. I don't have that sweater with me. I should be wearing it right now. That would have been good. Maybe I should go do that. I think I'm gonna go do that. Hang on. Okay, I got it. <laughs> I grabbed a couple more things. I could definitely fill up more than 15 minutes today and I think I might give myself that. I think I might let myself have a little bit longer today. Anyway, so this is me and my uh, Hillis bag growing and I'll just turn a little bit here because I think you'll be able to see more of the, I don't really know if you'll be able to tell, but there is a garter stitch triangle along the back of the shoulders. And then I did a little faux seam along the back and I did garter all the way across the bottom in the pocket and along the cuffs. So I would have to say that this is, sorry, it's not a good angle. <laughs> uh, but this is one of my favorite sweaters that I've ever made, for sure. I love the drop shoulder look. I like how easy it just seems to fall and sit exactly the way I, where I want it to. And the big pockets. I love them. So I am making, yep, one for my mother-in-law because she, this, she tried it on and this sweater just seems to look on, good on so many body types. Whether you're big on the top or big on the bottom, it just seems to fit right in somehow. I think also just the more cropped length for some reason I find it to be very very attractive and I think it just kind of highlights the natural shapes of people and yeah <laughs> so the one I'm doing for my mom which I am thinking I'm going to have to start over unfortunately um, this one I'm knitting at quite a fine gauge this yarn is like a a heavy a heavy it's a fingering rate. Is it heavy lace? I don't know. Anyway, the, I'm knitting this just at a much tense, more dense gauge. And I just think it's going to be a bit, bit too small. I don't know, but this fabric is absolutely lovely. Yeah. This is a BFL Gotland mix that I got from Gathering Yarn. I'm going to try and put all the details links stuff down in the down description because I think that's nice when people do that but this is yeah this beautiful BFL Gotland yarn that gathering yarn sells for a steal of a deal and it's this natural gray it's undyed in this color and I would very much like to get some more to dye it I'm on a sweater kick right now so it's my the trouble with my yarn purchasing is that I want to get enough to do sweaters <laughs> so I've been looking for options to get very interesting bases but at a lower price I'm just I'm kind of worn out of all the highland wools and uh, you know more um, like merino sort of like yarns that you can get at a lower price I'm I'm looking for more tooth and more interesting texture so I was very happy when I came across Gathering Yarn to learn that they were working with a British mill and Gathering Yarn is an interesting company because they actually go up and gather the mill ends that different mills have so these are kind of like the end of a run sort of lot allotments of yarn and they sell them at a very affordable price so it has allowed me to kind of play around a little bit more with learning how to dye and not feeling so tense about spending a bunch of money and then ruining something. And I like the fact that they're going around and making sure really that there's no waste at these mills and giving all of these little odds and ends a place to go. So yeah, I would check them out, definitely. And what else goodness can I say? Well, I mean, on on this one here, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. It's kind of hard at this point, but I'm doing a garter. I wanted to do a garter, thick garter band down the middle of this one. So I'm taking this sweater shape and I'm just playing with it. 
and figuring out what I kind of like the look of and I have like I said a cotton and silk one on the go and then I plan on doing another one because I want to do one for my my sister I have it in my head that wearing silk or cotton and those natural fibers and some light colors during the summertime it's just going to be really good for her skin I don't know why I have it in my head but that People with skin issues, you know, who have eczema or maybe psoriasis or get heat rashes. My husband gets these wild heat rashes. That wearing natural fibers in lighter colors in the summertime to kind of keep the heat off and allow the skin to breathe. I just think it's going to be helpful in keeping down the itch factor and maybe help relieve some discomfort. So I just have it in my head that I really need to knit both of them some light colored <laughs> plant based garments for the summer. So I'm very excited to get started on all those things because I did pick up those yarns from Gathering Yarn and I am just going to go and grab the other thing that I worked with from Gathering Yarn here too because I did some dyeing not that long ago. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna grab some other things too. It's just my baskets are full over here <laughs> with exciting new things. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so I did some dyeing over with my sister a couple weeks ago now. Um, yeah, this is with just Sequoia. And it is on a hemp, cotton, and linen base, which is called, they call it soft hemp uh, on their website. And so, this is gathering yarn again. And so I bought the Sequoia from Maiwa Handprints, and I scoured this, and then I put a tan, used a tannin, a Terra is the tannin's name, and then I mordanted it with um, alum. And then I stuck it in, and this is an entire cone. So I did, firstly, I think these were the first two skeins that I did, and they turned out, I mean, the camera is picking up the beautiful reddish tones that are in it, the reddish brown, and in life it's not quite so vibrant as this. There is, I would say, some more brown to it. But I love how really it does seem to change when you have it in fluorescent versus natural lighting and when you have it on camera versus when you have it in real life. I kind of love that it has this sort of chameleon-esque quality to it. These natural dyes, I think they're just, there's something about them that's so interesting and unique. So I'm excited to work on that. I think one of those skeins is going to go to a friend of mine because she, like me, is really in love with these <laughs> darker colors. But this was the second bath, the second dip. And this turned out just a tad lighter. Not really, not really much lighter at all. Like, it's really hard for me to tell which is actually which from afar. Because they're, they just have a lot of similarity to them. Yeah. So that's going to become just another <laughs> open front cardigan for me. And spinning. I have some spinning to show too. I've been at the wheel again and I didn't grab. I have a second skein of this, but I think I showed this on my last one. But again, I kind of rushed through everything because I couldn't see how much time I was spending and I forgot to set a timer and I couldn't see what I was doing. but. This is just beautiful stuff. So I am very much into trying to, I guess, muddy the colors is what I've heard someone, some people say about hand spun. So I split up everything into these, like these. I split everything down into a braid. I'll split it into eights usually. So uh, and that's going lengthwise. So I'll make these long, thin, sort of like pencil roving style little bundles and the reason that I do this is because I really want the 
colors to just mold in and meld in together. Oh, I'm getting a little battery warning. Anyway, that's just a sign that I need to hurry it up. So you can see here that the colors are just kind of all melded together. This this skein itself was a lot of very similar colors in it, whereas this one has a bit more differences, but it is I spun oh, I didn't bring my diff. I spun some of it up on a bobbin yesterday and you can see from afar it's got very much like a brown it looks brown and then when you look up close is when you start to see that there are lots of other colors going on in here and so this came from one of these so you can see how it looks before it's been split at all so the colors are you know you've got these kind of splotches of color on here I love the way Lynn dies. This is from West Coast Color, by the way. It's um, this was a part of her new, her latest update. She did a bunch of this yak and merino, and she's kind of got this way of splashing the dye on. I think that makes it just the, the yarn just comes out so interestingly. It's not like the chunks that you often see where it's like chunks of color. It's kind of like all splashed together in some places. And so I strip that all down. I spin it up. And I do that for both plies with the hopes that it will create these very meldy sort of colors together. So oh, I'm just going to see if I can eke in just a little bit more before this dies. <laughs> I went with Lynn to one of their neighboring farms slash brewery slash amazing awesome salvaged uh, buildings place called Cranaw Gales and so they keep some sheep on their property where they have their brewery and it's all organic beer and they use it's all organic organic farming practices and so they have roving for sale and they have yarn for sale and I don't know if she's online yet but this is CVM wool and it has been done in these pin drafted style so very much similar to the little balls that I'm making there so it's these thinner pieces of fiber and I really enjoy the pin drafted roving I find it very easy to spin in the finer gauge that I like to spin in so I got three of this beautiful sort of brownish taupey gray and I got this one which is a blend of the different sheep fleeces together whereas this one comes from magpie it's her first fleece. <laughs> and let's see if that'll focus. Yeah, there you go. And there, so you can so, so cute. Magpie. Oh, she's whatever. Magpie, you did a good job. Whatever you were doing, keep doing it. <laughs> so I'm excited to spin with CVM wool. I've knit with CVM wool, but I have not spun with it. And it has such a nice, beautiful loft to it and this sort of silky feeling that is just so nice. So, I'm going to stop now, quit while I'm ahead. Uh, there's so much more that I could show you and talk to you about because I've just been on a total creative kick. It's been helping keep me relatively sane anyway. So, I'll just have to get this camera out again soon. And for now, I'll just leave you with a bunch of clips that I took while I was at West Coast Colors Farm. All right, I'll talk to you next time. Bye.
so I am shooting this is Lynn's one of her newest bases it's called Homestead and it is made with 100% Alberta produced Rambouillet so this is still needing to be scoured so she's going to be doing that first before she gets in the dye pots and that just makes sure that all the spinning grease is out of it because right now it actually is not at all as puffed up as it usually looks because it's still got that spinning grease in it so she's going to give that a good wash so that all the dye is preserved properly So not used to being on camera, Lynn. <laughs> oh, I startled them. It's me. That's how they lie down. Down on the front feet and Aphrodite. She's Aphrodite and her lady sheep and uh, Olivia, our, our flock matriarchs right now, now that Sarah's gone and Coco's gone. Um, see that Icelandic? That he's right now, he's a perfect example of ruling. So you see around his neck, yeah. his fleece is actually broken off. That's his new fleece underneath. Chris and I have to catch him and his brother and get their fleece off. See the minute, like he doesn't know you. So yeah. the minute that you, uh, the minute you stepped out, he came over to see who you were. Because these are his babies, aren't they? Yes, you are. You're a good guy, Gus. Hi. No. This is the one that broke his horn. Oh. Yeah, so the blood has pretty much come off of him now, but boy, he bled like a stuck sheep. Was <laughs> it pretty? Oh, wait, no, I'm wrong. 